I'm Jen Campbell. This is Art About. And I'm here with my good friend, Phil Jameson. How you doing? I'm well. I'm uh, well. You're like a world traveler. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Been busy. So you're back in Beverly? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. Got that's back good. a week ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so I'm going to flip this interview on its head. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to um, challenge you. So I spent 3 months studying your music. Listening to it at the gym, listening to it when I walk around Beverly. Okay. And I I, I turned into like this the soldier of Caspian. All right, wow. Yeah. And and so I thought you were about to say like a soulless monster or something. No, nope, not a soulless monster. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. So what I want to do is um, your uh, record on circles is one of my favorites, and I took the time to write a haiku for each song on that album. Mm. And what I'm going to do is I'm I, I could have just like shared the haiku with you, and we could have. You know, shoot the uh, you know what about each haiku. All right, right. But I want to see if if you know your music. So I'm gonna read the haiku and see if you can guess the song that inspired the haiku. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm ready. But yeah, <laughs> let's let hit me, man. Yeah. Okay, and there's enticement. So so uh, this buddy here. <laughs> If you get two haikus right, you get what's in the magic bag. Two of the eight eight total, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. All right. Well, Are you ready? Are you primed? I think so. Do yeah. you need to stretch out? No, I think I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty limber. You're limber. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's the first haiku. Okay. Pouring chocolate. Bittersweet goodbyes, my love. Knowing it won't last. Very beautiful haiku. Oh, um, uh, nostalgist. Oh, so close. Okay, all oh, for one. Um, it's Ansra. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Because um, that uh, comes from a Boreal language, and it means. Do you, do you know this? Because I don't want to tell you things you know. No, no. Okay, so yeah. it's it's a. Indian language, and it translates into the bittersweet realization that a love will not last forever. Mm -hmm. And you have the bittersweet because you experienced love at one time, yeah. but you know it's never going to last. Yeah, there's a Portuguese word for that as well that I'm, I'm kind of having a, I'm, I'm forgetting, but it doesn't have a, an English correlate ah. as a word. Um, oh, saudade. Yeah, same same word. Very cool. Yeah. So so that's a no. Damn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the next one. Yeah. Taken by the hand, small ears listen to the tales, lost in the moment. <laughs> uh, Ishmael. Oh, yeah. so this was um, nostalgist. That was nostalgist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, rich earth and carpet, raining petals on green moss, open fireworks. It's got to be flowers of light. It's flowers Finally, of light. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, you knew that I, I would have to get that. So yes. You, yeah, you got, so gave me some confidence. I'm going to put this over here because <laughs> awesome. you, yeah. you got one. Perfect. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. You got one. <laughs> That's flowers of light. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next one. This one might be difficult because um, it makes no sense. Okay. But, um, nails on the side. Vampire rises from his coffin after long day's nap. That's wild blood. Oh. No? No. Oh, what, what on earth is that one? A collapser. A collapser. I shouldn't have done it. Okay. Collapser. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, it was, what's funny is it sounds like it's falling into the coffin by being collapser. C can you read that again? Yes, yes. Nails on the side. Vampire rises from his coffin 
after long day's nap. I love that. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's very um, that's very descriptive, uh, and it really does fit the mood of that song. That's uh, I love that. That's great. Oh, Jen, good, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, that song just to me captures vampires. Okay. I don't know why. Well, it's the yeah, and it's, it's not like the cheesy vampires. No, no, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Are you a fan of uh, Nosferatu at all? It's a Nosferatu vampire. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. They're, that's a really great director that I'm a huge fan of named Robert Eggers is putting out his version of that this Christmas. And I, I don't know if you've seen the trailer, but it looks very, very good. It does so, look very and good. That, movie, that song should be on the soundtrack to it, but alas, it's not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next time. Next time. That was great. I, I, I really like that one a lot. So I might give it to you. Yeah, I'll take it. But I won't because you, you said another song name first. I know, I will. Fail. <laughs> I know, I'm trying to just trust my gut here, you know, but I should have thought about the one a little more. All right, let's try next one. Haunted Landscape Fun, Ghostly Irish Country Dance, Bow to Your Partner. That has to be, well, no, okay, I'm going to, one more time. Okay, Haunted Landscape Fun, Ghostly Irish Country Dance, Bow to Your Partner. Is that Ishmael? It's Ishmael. It's Ishmael. It's mine, dude. It's so you. It's so you. No, it's mine. Yeah. But you don't get it yet. I know, I know. You're going for extra points. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So this one is the only one that has a name, as a title. The the kai haiku. Okay. Um. So the the title of this haiku is Wolf's Awareness. Wolf's awareness. Okay. Yep. Wolf's awareness. Stepping in puddles in the early rising sun, alone on the streets. Hmm. It's between two in my brain. Yeah. But I want to pick the right one. Um, Is that Wild Blood? That's the only Wild Blood. Oh, That's yeah. Wild Blood. Right. You got it. Sick. You got it. All right. We don't have too many left. So. Yeah, there's, there's good, what, three left, two? Uh, two left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, this was one of my favorite songs and one of my favorite images okay. of the haiku. Nice. Okay. California Freeway. Bouncing shadow of a guardrail, watching as it goes by. Yeah, beautiful. That's also a very beautiful haiku. I love that. Um, is that, uh, well, it's obviously one of two songs. One of two songs. <laughs> yeah. um, which makes me want to get it more. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's a toughie. Because I can associate that imagery with both songs pretty easily. Okay. Um, but I'm going to have to go with uh, Division Blues. Division Blues. Yes. All right. Yes. So you only, you only had three that so you... So what was the one for Circles on Circles? It's coming. Oh, okay. So this is Circles on Circles. Oh, yeah, right on. Yeah. And Circles on Circles. Okay. Um, evening coming in. Day's dirt, cakes on overalls. Smell the hayride back. Wonderful. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Oh, good. Autumnal vibes, you know? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Those, those are really nice. Okay. Love them. Love and I want to give them to you. Uh, that would please. I'd be honored. Okay. So, so the, those are yours. Thank you very much. And this is yours. Yeah, damn right it is. <laughs> what do we, so what do we got here? <laughs> I know. It's pretty light. It's, it's, yeah. It is light. Yeah. It is light. And it's shakable. Oh, nice. Early Harvest Diner. Yeah, so open it up. Okay. 
It's a gift certificate. How dirt, how dirty. Yeah. It's a gift certificate to Early Harvest. Wow, cool. Love it. Never been there. Oh, okay. All, always have wanted to go, though. Always have so, wanted to go. Oh, that's very, that's very thoughtful. So your first, first time is on me. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I'm glad that I won it. And you know your music. You're, you're safe and secure yeah, yeah. in your music. I guess. And it's funny because when we record our albums, um, and I've done this for all, all uh, five of them, once it's finished recording, like once we have finished recording and mastering and mixing the album, yep. I listen to it once and then never, ever again. Mm. So, I mean, I listen to them live when we perform the song, obviously, but the actual album, I, I never listen to it. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, that, I'm glad that I was able to, like, smuggle in some of the sonic vibes that are in my mind with those. So that, that worked. That's cool. Excellent. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, have, have fun with that. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I do have some, some other questions for you. Yeah, hit me. So um, I'm interested in your, your advice to a young artist. You come upon a young artist. What, what advice would you give them? Hmm. Um, well, I mean, it certainly, I guess it d depends on the discipline a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I could probably help, you know, guide a musician a lot easier than a fine artist or a filmmaker just because that wasn't the discipline that I um, gravitated towards and sort of gave myself over to. Yeah. But I think you can, you know, you can make the global application to, to anyone who's an artist. And, it, you know, it's a little cliche, but it really is like, you know, you, you got you to gotta just like focus on doing stuff that like really gets you excited, you know. Right. Um, it sounds obvious, but if you're faking it or you're doing something to be like cool or to get cred points or something, or um, yeah, that's just not going to be sustainable at work. You got to do stuff that like is inherently feels like you know imbued into like the deepest, uh, most secret recesses of of who you are as a human being. Um, and art's there to explore those places. And you know if you're doing that like with integrity and you're doing with that like you're being honest with what those things are, um, yeah, I think you'll have a lot more like success than if you're just kind of chasing like something that's like a fad or, or something like that, you know what I mean? Chasing a fad in the sense that they're molding their art to fit like the zygist of the moment. Absolutely, yeah, it's a really good way to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So people, people can sense authenticity. They know if you're doing something that feels, you know, like real and honest and sincere and genuine. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be like the number one advice, just to like you know, you know do do what you really actually enjoy doing, um, even if it's just for yourself, and it's something that no one else is into. It doesn't matter, you know. And there's so much time when you're an artist. It doesn't really matter what kind of artist, but it, there's so much time to understand your voice hmm. and have the courage to let that come through. And I, I I write, so it's kind of understanding what my tenor is and what my, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like a piece of marble that you chip away at over time and you finally get that statue at the end, but like it starts with just like a block. And you know, you gotta commit yourself to chipping away as much as you possibly can to see like what's underneath, you know? So yeah. That's how you find your voice and stuff, I think, so. Yeah, that's, right on. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Um, I'm interested in, place. I ask this question a lot of people because this show is focused on the arts in the North Shore. Yeah. And so in terms of place, how does your art, how is your art influenced by the North Shore? Um, that's a good question. I get asked that question a bunch and I don't, I'm not really sure. I, I don't, I think it's, uh, it's inescapable. Your art's just always going to be a product of wherever you're from, uh, whether you want it to be or not, you okay. know, like that's all, it's just your surround, your Physical surroundings are deeply imbued in like who you are as a person. Right. Um, for my music, I don't know. I mean, I'm a New England guy. I grew up here. Uh, grew up in the North Shore, and I don't know. Like one of the so many different things come to mind, but like one thing that comes to mind, I guess, is uh, like just seasonal affectation disorder. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Well, you know, like we're it's not we get very extreme seasons up here. Yeah. And I think that that has found a way of manifesting itself in like what I'm sort of drawn to creatively. 
Um, like, I'm not afraid to do, you know, to write incredibly heavy music or incredibly beautiful music, or I don't think it has to be like just one static kind of genre. Like, we don't have one static season. It's not like Florida where it's just like warm all year here, you know? Right. So that's like one of the weird ways where it sort of like crops up and manifests itself, I think, in what, in what my band does. Um, yeah, that, that's one that comes to mind. Dude, there's so many others, you know? The ocean has always been a huge inspiration. The ocean. The expansiveness of it, um, you know, the horizon, yeah, the infinite possibilities that a horizon represents, which is why I think we're kind of drawn to that as a species and why we like just staring out at the ocean. Um, yeah, those are a few that come to mind, I think. So when you mentioned like sort of the seasonal disorder. Yeah, stuff. well, I don't know if disorder is the right word. That's maybe <laughs> a little hard on myself. But like, yeah. No, no. Very sensitive to extremes and ups and downs and like a, yeah. a big like just sort of polyphony of environments, I guess. Yeah. It reminds me of that movie um, Lighthouse. The Lighthouse? The Lighthouse. Yeah, we, uh, that's the same director than the, the uh, Nosferatu remake. Okay. Same, same guy. Same guy. That's crazy, yeah. Yeah. I love that. That movie... You like it? I, I love that movie, and it's it's how, like, an environment can kind of torture you. Yeah. But, and still kind of be home. Big time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, talk to any of us, you know, in, like, late March, and you'll get a very different person probably than you'd get, like, mid-July or something. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you get, like, no talk. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Do you do you um, have a, a like a motto or a creed that you go by when it comes to art? Um, not really. Yeah, nothing. Nothing that specifically comes to mind. Um, you know, do what thou wilt. I guess just what, like do what do what you got to do to 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 bring out that you know, authentic, genuine part of yourself with whatever it is you're creating. Like right. what, whatever it takes um, to find, explore that part of you so that you can, you know, bring that to others and hopefully, like, encourage other people to find that part in themselves also. Yeah. But I, I would have difficulty putting it into, like, a, a sentence or a, a motto, I guess. But Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I have one either. Yeah. To be honest with you, yeah. it's 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 like um, one of the artists that I was working with in this show mm -hmm. uh, pointed me to a book that um, this uh, oil painter wanted to focus on specifically artists' studios. Oh, cool! And what it was about the studio that imprinted or enabled the art. Mm -hmm. Um, and he did these dioramas of, he would go visit the artist and then he would, and he would kind of take an assessment of the studio that, that they worked in. Yep. And then he'd do these dioramas of the studio. Cool. And he would give them like the shoebox size replica of their studio. Love that. Love that. Yeah. And he had, he had the question, what's your motto? What's your... Yeah, it's it's something really cool to contemplate and think about. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to just, like, think if I had to distill it into a sentence or a creed or something, what it would be. I think that's kind of like a fun fun challenge, but... Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, no doubt. The, um, going back to the North Shore, I yeah. know that you, you play a lot of places on the North Shore, you know, you you play the Cabot, you yeah, play... Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your experience in, you know, coming home after, after going to oh, so many so, places? Oh, it's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, what a, what, a, what a feeling. Become more insulated to it over the years, but, I mean, yeah, when we first started sort of setting sail, we, we for the first couple years of our band, you know, we were playing, like, the Pickled Onion. That was our first... You know, it's crazy. Okay. 20 years ago today was our first show ever. No way. At, at the Pickled Onion. No up, way. Uh, Randall Street. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Someone reminded me of that this morning, and I would have completely forgotten. Um, but yeah, yeah. We, we like most bands. You know, we start out in your your neck of the woods, and you sort of explore all the variation of places that you can, whether it's bars or warehouses or clubs or whatever. Um, and then you know you kind of want to branch out and find other places that might be able to accommodate what you're doing. 
uh, creatively, and we started doing that around 2006. 2006. Yeah, that's when we started sort of doing stuff in the United States. And yeah, those, that feeling of, especially then when, you know, you'd, we would be gone for two months playing for like four people a night in like Baton Rouge or Portland, <laughs> Oregon, or like just the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, but having a great time, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I very distinctly remember many times just rolling back into Beverly at like five in the morning after driving for 30 hours from Toronto or something and like that feeling where it just felt like there was like this renewal, like it was like somewhere familiar, but it was like now reinvented. Yeah. Because you're freighting in all these ex crazy experiences you just had over the last two months, you know. Mm. Um, I remember the, that really well. Uh, I know, you know, over time, like you get, in, yeah, you get sort of like insulated from that, um, and you're just happy to be home and sleep in your own bed, and that's all you care about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? Or go to your own bar or whatever. Like, it, may, it doesn't matter what it is, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, home is that's the thing, you know, when you're traveling all the time. And I think we had a moment in time between like 2008 and 2017 for almost a decade, where like all we were doing was just like traveling. Like for real, like just all the time, six, seven months a year. Oh, wow. Um, and there's that idea of home in the back of your mind that's there and you can picture it and envision it, but like you're in other people's homes for six months of the year. Right. In their cities and their towns and stuff. Um, and that, yeah, that gave me like a renewed appreciation for like home. Right. And like where that actually is. Yeah. And that's always been here and it probably always will be, you know. Yeah, it's a good place to return to. Yeah. After you've been out there, you know, taking your lumps and stuff. So, <laughs> taking your lumps. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good place to call home. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, do you have particular places in Beverly that you love to play? In Beverly? Um, I mean, we did, we did two shows at the Cabot finally in um, November of 2019. Okay. With an orchestra. That was very exciting because we got to sort of reimagine some of the songs. Um, and just sort of, you know, get some new colors on the, like the, the painting that we haven't worked with before because we were working with different instrumentation. Yeah. So those were very, very memorable. We, we filmed those shows. Um, we have them in an archive and I hope we can do something with those at some point soon. Um, but yeah, like we, we played, I don't know, we did a show at the American Legion in like 2006 that was lit. It was awesome. Oh, wow. You know, it was crazy. Yeah. That, that's when we were extremely loud <laughs> and like off-puttingly so. Yeah. Um, and like, I remember that building just barely being able to take it. Like, just <laughs> barely. Like the rivets oh in the God, walls yeah. were we, coming we out. We were like mm. destroying that place, but like in a good way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Obviously the block party, which someone alluded to earlier. That was 11 years ago now. Um, that was awesome. And it was so novel at the time. Like, I don't even remember those early block parties. Like, right. we literally built the stage ourselves. <laughs> like, they did not supply us with a stage. So, like, we built one, set it up, and then tore it down after the show and, like, just threw it out or something. <laughs> and, like, that... like, burned it for kindling yeah, yeah, or something? Yeah, straight up. I, I, I actually <laughs> think we went to Singing Beach or something and made, like, a bonfire with the stage or something like that. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, like just, oh man, so many. Those, those come to mind though. Right. Um, and yeah, of course, early days playing at the Onion, that was a totally different place back then, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's been, I had some crazy stuff here, man. That's awesome. Yeah, no doubt. The, um, so if people want to find Caspian, mm. they want to find Phil Jameson, yeah. where do they find you? Uh, well, I think this day and age, it seems like everyone kind of uses, in our world, like Instagram's a big deal. Instagram. So what's your we're, Instagram? We're on there. Yeah. Um, it's Caspian Official as the Instagram handle. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of like social media home base. Okay. These days, I don't really use X anymore. Okay. That thing's kind of a dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> Facebook is, is weird just because, like, you have to pay to get your stuff in. Yeah, so... We just sort of don't use that a bunch, but yeah, Instagram is where we go. We have a website. It's just caspian.band. Okay. Um, and we have we actually started a YouTube channel, our own like sort of Caspian TV thing. Yeah. That's got a lot of really cool archival material on there. That's just um, I think that's YouTube.com/slash Caspian the Band. 
So yeah. we, we actually just launched that before this tour and we're really stoked on like adding stuff like this to it and whatever. Good. Um, so yeah, those, those would probably be like the, the home bases. Nice. I would say, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, um, Mr. Phil, hmm. um, not only are you going to the early harvest, <laughs> uh, yeah. but um, I cap every show with a poem that I write during the show. Oh, awesome. And I did that today. Excellent. So this is your poem, and I, I sign it, and I date it, and I give it to you. So this is your poem. Dragons, live mouths, haiku masters unite, pictures are electric, and tell the tale of dragons on fire and peas in a pod, done and loose. So thank you for joining us. Absolutely beautiful. That's uh, yours. You wrote that on the spot. I wrote that on the spot. Outstanding, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Very, very cool. Thank, well, thank you. you. We really appreciate you having me on this. Yeah. yeah. That means a lot, like for real. Thank you. This is a lot of fun. That's beautiful. Thank you so That's much. That's for you. And um, I'm Jen Campbell, and this has been Art About with Phil Jameson.